And these three ayat, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm Ad-Deen, these three ayat are everything a person needs to know about Allah. This is Allah's complete introduction to Himself. All you can say, all of these things are knowledge about Allah. Allah has taught us about Himself in these three ayat. Knowledge leads to results. When you learn something, you at the end of learning you say, what is the conclusion? What is the result? Now, what bits of knowledge did we learn? Alhamdulillah was the first bit of knowledge. Rabbil Alameen was the next bit of knowledge. Ar-Rahman, then Ar-Rahim, and then Maliki Yawmideen. All of these are individual bits of knowledge. And all of them lead to one thing. Iyaka na'budu. You, we declare that we are going to enslave ourselves to Allah as a result of Alhamdulillah. Additionally, as a result of Him being Rabbil Alameen. If that wasn't enough, here's another reason to become Allah's slave, Ar-Rahman. If that wasn't enough, here's another reason, Ar-Rahim. And if that's not enough for you, you better watch out, you better become a slave because He is Maliki Yawm Ad-Deen. Ya Allah, you gave me enough reasons, I'm ready. Where do I sign? Iyaka na'budu. Now Allah did not say, u'budu, enslave yourselves as a result. He didn't command us. He actually put those words in a sense in our mouth. He told us what we should be saying. I'm going to write down a translation I think somewhat captures the sense of iyaka na'budu. That is the declaration, Iyaka na'budu. It is only to you that we give ourselves totally and absolutely in worship. Are we talking about him or to him in this ayah? Hmm. You know what we're learning here? If you really get to learn who Allah is in the first three ayat, you automatically learn he's listening. Because if he's master, he's listening to his. Slaves, so there's no reason for you to wait and see when, I, when can I get in touch with him. <laughs> you immediately got in touch with him. You didn't say, I only worship him. We're only going to worship him. We said, we're only going to worship. You were already ready to talk to him. We didn't just talk about him. We talked to him. Fatiha, we're talking not about Allah. Allah told us about himself. And then he, a natural result of that is, why wouldn't you want to talk to him? You should talk to him. Immediately, Allah taught us to talk to him. Iyaka, not iyahu. Iyaka na'budu. Then this is a declaration, guys. Okay, when is, when is in American history, when have you heard the word declaration? <laughs> That's declaration of independence. This is what? Declaration of what? Worship. Slavery. <laughs> declaration that I give up my independence. Declaration of non-independence. Declaration of dependence to Allah. It's beautiful. Because when you and I declare our slavery to Allah, that is the only time we are truly free. People who, are, who think they're free, either they're enslaved to their body, or they're enslaved to their temptations, or they're enslaved to their entertainment, or they're enslaved to their culture, or they're enslaved to their false ideology, or they're, ens they're enslaved to one, or their fashion, or their friends, or their peer pressure. They're enslaved to one thing or another, or another, or another. You want to be free from all of those forms of slavery. Real freedom comes when you become a slave of... Allah, you don't have to look like anybody else. You don't have to talk like anybody else. You don't have to walk like anybody else. You don't have to pretend to be fit, fit in because now you, the one who you need to please is one. All that other stuff is gone. You don't feel bad about yourself because you're too short or you're too tall or you're too skinny or you're too fat or you're not this, you're not that. You don't feel bad about that at all because now the only one you need to impress is Allah. All those other forms of slavery are gone. We, you know, when I first came to the United States, I was in high school. And one of the things, I, the first thing I noticed was people didn't have uniform in school, right? In Pakistani school, in Saudi school, we used to have uniform. I came to high school, yeah, everybody's dressed like a bum. <laughs> but all of a sudden, like my first observation was, there is uniform. All the goth kids dress the same. All the hip-hop kids dress the same. You know, all the heavy metal kids dress the same. All the yuppie kids dress the same. They all, and they even have the same kind of haircuts. They buy the same exact brand of sneakers. 
They're not the same exact brand. They even wear them the same way. They are enslaved. They're not free. They're just pretending they don't even realize they're slaves. They're slaves to brands. Dude buys a car and writes like huge letters, Honda, <laughs> on top. Like as if the company needed free advertising more. And in case anybody might forget that that's a Toyota <laughs> that you wrote Honda on. But anyway, <laughs> right? That's also slavery. This is, a, this is the real declaration of independence. It's independence from everything else. It's independence from, it's independence from money. It's independence from the praise of people. It's independence from peer pressure. It's independence from everything else. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Now let's talk about this a little bit. Well, how many times we recite this declaration of slavery to Allah? Every salat, huh? Most translations say, only you we worship. You ever read that? Yes. Huh. And I'm saying, only you we what? Give ourselves into slavery and worship. Because slavery and worship are two different things. And abada ya'budu and abuda ya'budu are combined in this word. They're two different things. Is it possible somebody worships Allah but still doesn't have the attitude of a slave? Sure. 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 It's together. Let me tell you something. Here's the definition of a slave. Here's the definition of a slave. Someone who doesn't do what they want, they do what? The master wants. That's the definition of a slave. The only time they do what they want is when the master says, okay, go ahead. That's the only time they do what they want. Otherwise, they never do what they want. Even if they want to do something, who do they go ask first? They say, master, can I do that? He says, yeah, go ahead. But don't do it more than this. And watch out for that. And then come back here immediately. Don't do it all day. He'll give you limits. That's the definition of a master. Now what do we hear from teenagers in our community all the time? I can do what I want. I can live how I want, you know. I want to be who I want to be. That's awesome. Because already, what are we almost negating in our attitudes? Slave, the definition of slavery. Let me add another problem to this. Something so beautiful. Wallahi, it's so beautiful to me. In the Qur'an, the word Rabb, the word Rabb, in the Qur'an, very many times comes in close proximity with the word Huda. What word did I just say? Huda. What does Huda mean? Guidance. 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 The word Rabb, you'll find it close to the word Huda. Innani hadani Rabbi ila sirati mustaqim. Okay. Sabbi hisma rabbika al-a'la al-ladhi khalaqa fasawa wal-ladhi qaddara fa Rabb and then what? Hada. Over and over and over again in the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal repeats the word Rabb with the word Huda. Master, guidance, master, guidance, master, guidance. They come close to each other. The question is, what's the relationship between master and guidance? Let's understand that relationship. It's very easy to understand. After that, I'll give you guys a five minute break so you refresh your attention span so we can finish the surah properly, okay? Maybe seven minutes, I'll be nice. Okay, but listen to this. Rub, rub, and rub's relationship with what? With guidance. I'll give you a, a dumb example because it helps you understand, okay? And help me understand at least. Somebody comes over to you and says, hey, I want to be your master. I says, okay, I'll be a slave. <laughs> and now the two of you are standing there staring at each other for five minutes. It's getting kind of awkward. And then the new slave says what? <laughs> what am I supposed to, uh, you want to go hang out or something? Or what do you want to do? <laughs> a slave is only a slave when he does what the master wants. But a slave cannot know what the master wants until the master tells him. The only time a master is a master is when he gives the slave instructions. What is guidance? Instructions. instructions. If we have accepted Allah's master, then the first thing we need from him is what? Yes. Guidance. That is why after our declaration of slavery, what's the first thing we're going to find ourselves asking from Allah? Yes. Guidance. Because that's what you do to be a slave. You get guidance from the Master, the two things are logically tied to each other. Without instructions from the master, you're not even a real slave. Even if you want to be. 
Even if you want to be, you can't be. You know, before Islam, people used to dance around the Kaaba naked. They thought it would make Allah happy. And some people even say, I'm doing this, I don't know what else to do. Ya Allah, tell me. I don't even know what to do. I don't know what it means to be your slave. I can't use my creative imagination for that. I'm depending on you to tell me. That's exactly what revelation is. It's Allah telling us, you asked, here it is. You realize you have to be a slave, well here's how you be a slave. اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطُ mustaqim. But we're not going to that yet, I wanted to allude to it so you understand what's coming next is connected. At least I want to finish this ayah. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ It is only and only your help that we seek. The word help is kind of um, not as clear as the word nasta'in. So I have to kind of explain the word nasta'in to you guys before we take a break and tie these two things together. Isti'ana in Arabic comes from the word aun. Aun means help in matters that you are struggling with. I'll say that again. It means help in matters that you are struggling with. I'll give you an example. You're driving, you have a flat tire. Somebody walks by and you say, hey buddy, could you help me out? I got a flat tire. And by the way, the spare tire is in the trunk. I've already popped it for you. And there's a, there's a jack in there too. I'm listening to my favorite news station right now. So you go ahead. Okay? You asked for help, didn't you? But you were not struggling yourself. Here's the second situation. You don't try that unless you want to get punched in the face. So, here's the second situation. You got a flat tire. You, your royal highness, got out of the car, took out the spare tire, took out the jack, you're cranking up the car, but you're not strong enough to raise it the whole way. Somebody walking by, you say, hey buddy, could you help me out a little? Is this a different kind of asking for help? Yes, yes because you were already struggling. If you ask for help when you're already struggling, then you use the word nasta'in, isti'ana. By using that word, what we are claiming to Allah is, Ya Allah, I'm already trying everything I can, so I, just help me because I can't do it by myself. In other words, if you are not making any attempts, you have no right to ask Allah for help. That's what that means. You know, you meet people that say, yeah, yeah, you know, bro, I, I really want to become a better Muslim. Now you ask them, you pray? No, bro, I don't pray. Well, do you pray? Yeah, I pray. Five times? Yeah, five times. Every day? One time? Whoa! I could never do that. Allah hasn't helped me yet. Make dua, Allah helps me. Make dua, Allah gives me tawfiq. Yes, one day you'll have a baby, his name will be tawfiq. But... <laughs> but you know what they say, right? I can't do it until what? Allah helps me, I don't, I don't have to bother. Well, I'm only going to the party because the help of Allah hasn't arrived yet. I checked my email like three times today. It hasn't arrived yet. Once I download it, then I'll be fine after that, right? What is Allah saying in this ayah? Don't you dare ask for help until what? You're struggling yourself already. This is a formula from Allah for life. All over the Qur'an we learn this formula. First people make struggle, then the help of Allah comes. First Ibrahim is thrown in the fire, then the fire becomes... Cool, he doesn't get an email the day before, don't worry, it's going to be cold. No, 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 no. First the Muslims show up in the battle of Badr, then the angels arrive. The angels are not there saying, we've been here since 2.30, where were you guys? No, 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 no. They come, first you make the effort, then the help arrives, you understand? So when we ask Allah for help, what are we already claiming? Ya Allah, I'm already trying, so you better not be lying to Allah. You better not be lying to Allah. Lying to each other is bad enough. In Salat, if you're standing and saying, and you're not making any struggles, then you're not lying just to yourself. Watch it. <laughs> means, I've, I've declared slavery to you, Ya Allah. Of course. You're watching a movie, Maghrib time, your mom says, Maghrib time! God, Maghrib again! <laughs> okay! Pause the movie, go stand in front of Allah, I'm totally your slave, Allah, I'm so your slave. <laughs> And I'm trying so hard. Just help me be better. Because I'm trying so hard. Assalamu alaikum wa assalamu alaikum wa Play. <laughs> Is that not lying to Allah? Yes. Is that not insulting? Watch it. Don't make a joke out of salat. It's supposed to transform your personality. It's not hit and run that you get it over with. It's not, you know, just boom, 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 done. 
So ironic. People recite the shortest surahs they know when they pray. Right? The whole surah is telling you you're in trouble because you don't have any time. And you're reciting the surah telling Allah, Ya Allah, I don't have any time. So I'm just going to recite this surah. This is the last thing I'll share with you and I'll give you your 10 minute break. 10 minutes, so I took long. I'll give you 10 minute break. We'll be back exactly in 10 minutes. And brothers, because you talk a lot, don't talk a lot, okay? <laughs> so I'm totally not talking to the sisters here. That never ever catch up on each other and the four generations behind in the past. Like, they, got, they never get that kind of extensive intelligence. Anyway, so, last thing I want to share with you. Allah mentions, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ It is only to you that we give ourselves in slavery, and it is only your aid after putting effort ourselves that we seek. The question is, why put it in this sequence? What's the benefit of saying, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا first and إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينُوا second? Let's talk about a couple of benefits and I'll let you go. They're both very beautiful benefits. Why were we created? To become slaves and worship or to ask for help? To become slaves and... Worship. And to help us do that, we need help. So what should be mentioned first, the primary task or the secondary task? The primary task is mentioned first. Yaka na'udu first, yaka nasta'een second. Now, one more thing. And this is one of my favorites. When we worship, it is for the sake of Allah. When we ask for help, it is for the sake of ourselves. Listen again. When we worship, it is for the sake of Allah. And when we ask for help, it is for the sake of ourselves. What you owe Allah should be mentioned first, out of respect. And what you want for yourself should be mentioned second. You are secondary. What Allah wants is primary. What you want is secondary. Get that through your heads, Muslims. What Allah wants comes first. What you want comes second. Don't turn to Allah making dua on the 27th of Ramadan when you haven't given Allah what He wants the entire year. And you just come around and say, Ya Allah, I need a promotion. I need a raise. I need to get approved for my third haram mortgage. 27th of Ramadan, Muslim making dua. You know? Don't ask Allah for things when you haven't given him his due first. We're learning right here already. Before you ask me, you better be doing my job. And you better be brave enough, you're doing so much of your job, that you can actually have the guts to stand in front of me and tell me that I am doing my job. Ya Allah, I'm making a claim. I'm enslaving myself to you. And that's why I feel like I am qualified now to ask you for help. At least I'm trying to become your slave. Now help me. If you can really honestly do that, now you're, we're beginning to understand what Fatiha is. What Fatiha is supposed to do for us. This is, what, this is for a person who gets to know, really know who Allah is. Take a good 10 minute break, make long distance phone calls, crow, go cry in a corner because it's been going on forever. And inshallah ta'ala will come back, I'll try to wrap it up within 40 minutes I hope. Barakallahu li wa lakum, fil Qur'an al-Hakim, wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum al-ayat, wa dhikr al-Hakim. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam. على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد We got a little bit through إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين I wanted to ask also a, a simple question to all of you guys If a friend of you came over to you I know I've, I've, I've set up the scene for some weird conversations already like you went over to a friend and said hey, you want to be my slave? and you're like oh okay, well sure but here's a little weird setting. Friend comes over to you, you say to your friend, or I say to a student, hey, could you help me a second? Much more normal, right? Not like be my slave, but help me. Hey, help me out a second. Friend says, sure. Now you're sitting there quietly. That's also kind of awkward, because once you ask for help, what needs to be there? What do you need to tell the person you just asked help from? What do you need help with? You need me to punch you in the back? What do you, what do you need me to do? What do you want me to do? How do you need my help? It needs to be clear. Now the only time you don't have to explain is when the person you're asking already knows. You're carrying a huge box and you say, could you help me a second? And he says, yeah, yeah, what do you want me to do? I'm going to write an email for you or... No, no, no. Genius. Help me carry this. It's right here. It's obvious. You understand? We asked Allah, إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Aid us, help us. That's what we asked Allah, help us. What did we not say? Help us in what? 
Now there's several reasons why you wouldn't say it. One of those reasons is the one you're talking to already knows. When you say, I need help, he already knows what you need help in. You don't even have to say it to him because he already knows. That's one benefit. The other benefit is actually something more comprehensive. The list was so long that I just said help. Because I don't just need help in one thing. I need help in everything. Yeah, Allah help me with my health, with my job, with my career, with my salat, with my children, with my wife, with my mother, with my mother-in-law. <laughs> Ask for that one like three, four times, right? <laughs> help, 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 help. The list would have been too long, so what do you do? Help. It's a statement of desperation. There's a third reason too. So the first reason is the one you're listening already knows. The second reason is the list is too long. Here's the third reason. Imagine you were taking a walk, you're going hiking or something, and you tripped, and you got like one hand holding the cliff below you 10,000 feet, a thousand feet, whatever, some crazy height, 10,000 feet sounds crazy, but a thousand feet. What do you cry out? Here's multiple choice question, what do you cry out? Choice one, if anyone can hear me, I am holding on by one hand at an altitude of 1,000 feet, possibly at the danger of slipping, causing severe internal injuries leading most likely to my death. So if you would, please assist me at this very moment. Option B, help! Which one? Help! Why? Why, don't, why are you at a loss of words? Because you're desperate. There's no time to even explain. I am that desperate. When we ask Allah, إِيَّاكَ nasta'een, The third implication is we are actually desperate for Allah's help. It's like we can't even come up with the words when we say, إِيَّاكَ nasta'een. Ya Allah, just, just help. Then there's the principle of proximity. We just said to Allah, Ya Allah, I'm going to be your slave. I have declared that I'm your slave and I'm going to worship you. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ Is that an easy thing to do or a hard thing to do? Being, being Allah's slave totally and absolutely easy or hard? We're not doing that well so far. So, it's pretty hard. And when you just decided to do something hard for him, now that you told him you're going to do it, immediately you say what? Ya Allah, uh, can you help me a bit with this? Because I just told you I'm going to do this really big thing that I'm not sure if I can do by myself, so help me. Uh, I'm in everything, but most importantly, help me with being a slave. So it's not limited to being helping in slavery, but the first thing is slavery itself. If there's one help we need, of all the other kinds of help, you need help with your feeding, with your clothing, with your shelter, with your family, but of all those things, the first help is, Ya Allah, help me be a successful creation of Allah, help me be a slave. Help me become that first. Now what did I tell you? What's the starting point of that relationship? How does a master and slave relationship start? What's the first thing needed? Instructions. That's why we ask for instructions next. It is the most specific kind of help. Of all the areas we could have asked for help in, in this surah Allah taught us, if you ask for this help, all the other things you need I will cover. We could have asked him for rizq, right? We could have asked him for forgiveness, right? We could have asked him for an enjoyable life, to stay away from difficulty, no matter fall into fitna. We could have asked him for a ton of things in Fatiha, but he said, let me tell you to ask me this one question, because if you get the answer, if you get this one answered, all your problems will be solved. What is that one question we ask Allah? Ihdina. <laughs> 